Well, how did, I thought it might be fun to come along and see how this fire truck is maintained and operated. The truck is for summer wildland fires. We drain the tanks out every winter so the pipes don't freeze. But winter's over, it's, now it's time to wake her up, fill up the water tank, and get some practice in. Practice driving, filling the tank, pumping, hooking up hoses and nozzles. Well, there's no grid power here, no PG&E or grid utilities, so I want to see how you come up with the water pumping to fill this thing. The idea is that this is the first responder right here on the scene in the summertime when the grass is dry, everything's dry, and it's a fire waiting to happen. We can jump on a fire before it gets too big. A good 15 to 25 minutes before the real professional firefighters would get here. And one time, many years ago, with a different truck, it actually fulfilled its purpose and helped save a neighbor's home. Now, a lot of people don't understand, when you get into these bigger size fire trucks, they have air brakes. And so if there's no air pressure in the system, you can't take the emergency brake off. It's permanently stuck on until you get at least 70 pounds of pressure into the system. So let's get started. Let's turn both batteries on, set to both. And we see the green lights saying the batteries are on. Then we crank the engine. And there's that awful buzz and the red light there saying that there's not enough air pressure. It's warning. You actually have to sit here for quite a few minutes. And you can rev the engine up to have it happen a little faster, but it still takes many minutes. to get this up past 70. Once it gets past 70, you're good to go. Now I suppose in a real firehouse, the way they had these things always on the ready was they had them plugged into air compressors with quick release umbilical cords. You can take the emergency brake off and get on down the road. But I just want to flex the system back and forth and just make sure everything's working good. So I put the brakes back on and now I'm watching the pressure. Now at 120, the governor's going to kick out the compressor. But every time it does that, it purges this air brakes filter, this canister up here that stores all the moisture and oil debris in the compressed air and purges it out. It's a great feature that this truck did not originally have, but I installed it, got it off of a newer truck. It keeps the compressed air going to the brake system dry and free of oils and crap. So next stop, obviously, is to go and fill this tank up with water. We need a thousand gallons. But I want to first kind of flex and exercise these air brakes and make sure everything's working right. There's the gas, there's the brake. You see every time you push it makes that little noise and the pressure goes down. There's the gas. Okay, we're out of here. So we're going on down to a secret private fire hydrant to get our water. And it's just between you and me, like, don't tell anybody. Secret. Okay.
Remember, anything above 70 pounds is good on that air brake pressure gauge. So here's the secret fire hydrant at an undisclosed location. Now this is some two and a half inch line that we already made up and we know that it's the exact right length to get from here down to the truck with no kinks in it. Now how long does it take to fill this up? Well, to pull up here, hook up the hoses, fill the tank, unhook the hoses and be on your way. It's about 9-10 minutes. And that's if you've practiced. You don't want to be fumbling around wasting time when it's an emergency fire situation. Even a few neighbors have practiced along with me. Now these are just drains that are open during the winter when the whole system is drained down to keep it from freezing and breaking. I gotta close them up. And now this is the tank fill valve and I gotta pull that open. Let's go up and see where this water's coming from. I know the tanks are up here, but there's no grid utility power here. So how is the water getting pumped up into these tanks? Well, we'll find that out later. But something's definitely pumping water into this tank right now. If it sounds hollow like up there, up there, that hollow, it's empty, but if you, it sounds real dull thud, then the water's right there. So that tank's almost completely full. Ooh, see that white melted stuff? That was facing into the forest when the wildfire came through. <laughs> it didn't do so well. But the water inside the tanks kept them from burning up. They never got too hot. These three tanks total 7,000 gallons capacity. But where is this water being pumped from? Well, let's get our bearings here. Right down there is where the fire truck would be parked. It's not there right now when I'm filming this. But if you go all the way across that field, way over there on the other side of that field, that metal structure, that's a pump house. And there's a water well underneath it, and it's pumping water all the way across that field cross the road up this hill to these tanks. But how is that well pump being powered? Hmm, I don't hear any generator noise and there's no grid power, so... Okay, she's all filled up. Now, disconnecting procedure. 
you've got to block both ends off to this hose and drain the pressure out of it before you can unscrew it. Also got to close up the tank fill valve. Now that both ends of this hose have been blocked off with closed valves and the pressure's drained, I can easily unscrew the connections. You hear that water running out of the open hose end. It's good because it's laying downhill and all the excess water inside the hose is going to drain out. And that's what I'm looking for when I want to roll this hose up and stow it away for the next time. Okay, great water flow, but you're not telling us how this water is getting pumped out of the ground. Doing the practice drills with this helped a lot to make this go a lot faster. Doing it over and over a few times to get the hang of it and how heavy and how thick this hose feels. You gotta kind of whack off all the dust and weeds and dirt and stuff as you wind it up. So it's in there nice and clean and in order for the next guy. Very important. One more chore here. Put the fire hydrant back in stealth mode. Can you see where the fire hydrant is? Hmm. Pretty good camo. I thought I'd take a little detour side trip here and show where this water came from and what's going on over here. But if you're not interested and want to just continue on with the fire truck story, then skip ahead to the time mark shown there. So remember that look across the valley. Here's that building and there's the wellhead. See what's going on in here. This guy kind of scorched a little bit in the wildfire, but everything survived. It looks like some kind of a deep well, submersible pump. Aha, uh -huh. Lorenz, solar powered. And that says that the tank's full, <laughs> which it is. Pretty nice setup. I wonder where the solar panels are. This contraption, it's just a way to get the flexible black poly pipe out of the well. You lift it up out of the well and it bends over that wheel, comes out, goes out, hooked to a truck or a tractor or whatever, and that's how you pull the pump out of the well. The pump is 200 feet down and it puts out 10 gallons a minute. What's up there? What are we looking at there? Oh, there's the solar panels. Well, I hope you don't mind the distraction from the fire truck, but I'll go up there and check out those solar panels. 
<laughs> Another distraction. These trees are so big and old. They're oak trees. I'm just guessing, but they got to be at least 250, 300 years old. So that means they were here before the United States was a country. I like thinking about it that way. Okay, a quick peek up to see the solar panels here. Looks like two racks, and they are trackers, some work trackers. Yeah, very few trees and bushes had to be cut to get the excellent solar exposure. This was an interesting location where the place to put the water well was way down there in the lowlands and the best place to put the solar was way up here. Sometimes they're not close together. So before the fire, this water pumping system was supplying water to a big garden. And that hasn't come back yet, but in the meantime, <laughs> it's given the water for our fire truck. Nice job. Solar. Meanwhile, back at the ranch... Well, I've spent so much time dilly-dallying with the big oak trees and the solar panel for the well pump that we never got around to showing how this fire truck actually pumps water out of its hoses to spray to put out a fire. But that's enough for now for this video. I'll make a part two. It's already in the works and we'll show how to start up the little booster pump engine, little three-cylinder Yanmar diesel that does the pump and roll on this and, and how it all goes down. Or comes out. Get this pump going and shoot some water out of this thing. But for today, mission accomplished. Got the fire truck woke up and filled with water. Oh 